Hello, as part of the Symposium on Computer Animation 2020, I will be presenting our work. Uh, probabilistic character motion synthesis using a hierarchical deep latent variable model. In this paper, we present a probabilistic model for generating natural character motion. Now, one of the primary motivations for our work is that when people execute actions, they are not identical every time. Um, even when it's the same person. So for example, here you can see uh, a subject performing the jump action, and you can see the subtle variations uh, between the movements for each sequence. When we extend this to multiple individuals, that level of variability only increases. The goal of our system is therefore threefold. We want to generate realistic action sequences exhibit naturalistic variation between those sequences as uh, we've just demonstrated with those example videos. And lastly, we want to concentrate on being able to tune the appearance of these sequences via weak control signals. So the reason we want to focus on weak control signals is to capture the use cases such as background character or crowd animations, where the animator may not want to always take the time to specify all aspects of the sequence, such as the trajectory, but rather would just like to be able to modulate the quality of the movement, um, such as by specifying a specific individual or body type. So if we take a step back and look at how humans produce motion, uh, we view it as a hierarchical process starting from intention through motor planning, muscle activation, that produces torque on the joints, which leads to the ultimate pose that is adopted. Now, stochasticity can be introduced at any point within this process, um, and that can lead to a slight variation in the ultimate pose that is taken up. Each individual pose process is then strung together with subsequent processes to uh, project across the temporal stream and form a co uh, complete motion sequence. Here we show a rendered example of our method demonstrating its capability of generating motion clips given only very weak control signals, such as action type or style. As you can see, the synthesized motions are realistic while also retaining natural appearing variation between a, each given uh, uh, sequence. In addition to the practical applications in animation for things like crowd simulation, which we've already mentioned, our method can also be used for generating large data sets with high levels of diversity for subsequent tasks such as motion matching. This latter capability is particularly supported by our method's ability to generate a diverse range of motions given the same set of control signals without early cl uh, collapsing to the mean, um, which might take place in more deterministic methods. So let's dive into our approach. Our framework is hierarchical, stochastic, and is underpinned by a deep hierarchical recurrent architecture, which we'll now explore in a little more detail. So our architecture operates with a two-level hierarchy. Our high-level representation layer, which is specified here as level H, um, operates as a probabilistic recurrent cell with multiple levels of abstraction across the spatial dimension. Our low-level representation, level L, is a deterministic block which converts the high-level space into the space of poses. Stochasticity is injected by a latent variable model into the higher level, thereby taking advantage of the higher levels of abstraction to ensure smoother and more consistent modulation of the whole action output. Taking inspiration from language models, we also extend each block across the temporal direction, uh, where the latent space representation of the, is projected into, over a subsequence of poses, uh, linking individual poses into what we call motion words. In this way, the stochasticity that we've injected is propagated in the temporal direction as well as the spatial direction, uh, which again leads to a more internally consistent modulation of the entire motion. In our architecture, we refer to the recurrent cell as a motion cell, where its output comes out at the level of the word, uh, which is then decoded to reproduce a subsequence of poses um, at the pose level decoder. 
Again, drawing inspiration from language models, each individual word can be strung together with subsequent words to form a complete action sequence analogous to a sentence. We use the combination of hierarchical structure and probabilistic recurrence to define our stochastic latent variable at the word level. During training, the training data are encoded into words using word encoders uh, and we apply a pre-trained autoencoder on the training data itself to filter out um, any sort of high frequency noise which um, is common due to things like marker occlusions or mislabeled markers in the motion capture process. We also integrate a number of individual pre-trained classifiers to the model uh, where each one uh, labels a specific attribute um, in order to infer attributes from unlabeled input sequences and to provide additional higher level learning signals to the objective function. This allows us to constrain the model to generate animations which fulfill the semantics defined by the attribute codes that we've included in the model training. The design of the motion cell is based on an entangled conditional variational autoencoder and a transition block. The VIE models the spatial dependencies and is additionally conditioned on control parameters and previous information. The transition block models the temporal dependencies and is a function of not only the input variable and previous internal state, but also the current latent variables. By conditioning both spatial and temporal paths on the same latent variable, we introduce variability across both dimensions simultaneously. The blue connections are only present during training and the red connections are only present for generation. Uh, for the generation phase. We'll now step through a training phase in a little more detail. So at each time step, the parameters of the VAE posterior distribution are computed given the motion word feature representation from training, um, as well as the previous hidden state and the feature representation of the control signals which are being input. We then use that po uh, posterior distribution to sample the late code, uh, which is represented by Z of N. We then pass this onto another network to compute its feature representation. Note that we also compute a prior distribution given the previous hidden state and the control signal, which is used as a regularization term in the VAE during training. The reconstructed word is computed by concatenating the latent code features, previous hidden state, as well as the control signals, and passing the full tensor through a decoding network. Finally, we also update the hidden state by using a stack of two GRU cells, given, which are given both word features and latent code features. During generation, our parameters of our prior distribution are computed very similar to the training phase, except without the addition of a training input. We again sample latent code from the prior distribution, which is then given to the decoder to reconstruct the word uh, by using the concatenation of the latent code, previous hidden state, and control signals. The generated word is also passed back into the network such that the hidden state can be updated as in the training phase. We formulate model training as an optimization problem to minimize an objective function which includes three terms. For the purposes of time, we're only going to dive into the first uh, variation autoencoder loss term, uh, but I'll quickly overview the second and third term. So the second term in our objective is loss is a complementary loss from the output of intermediate and final layers of our pre-trained classifiers. This constrains the model to generate animations which fulfill the semantics, which are defined by the attribute codes provided by the weak control signals. The third term is used to encourage the model to produce valid rotations. We add some constraint terms to the final objective functions that are based on the representations we use for the joint angles. This is dependent on the particular joint angle representation that we employ, and I encourage you to look at the paper for further details. Uh, this helps to better ensure convergence at the beginning of the training process and smooths the optimization landscape. 
we further break our variational autoencoder loss into two terms, a reconstruction loss and a regularization term, which was mentioned previously when describing the motion work. The regularization, which is denote, denoted here as lambda KL, times LKL, is the summation of the KL divergence between the posterior and prior distributions over time. In previous models of this sort, the reconstruction loss has typically been defined as the distance between observations and the reconstructed value. We use a custom loss over joint angles to simultaneously train the motion word encoder and decoder. So models which use 3D joint locations will norm usually normalize the skeleton size of the training samples and define the loss as, the, either, as an LP norm over joint locations. The main problem to the, in this approach is that during training and generation, they are not exploiting the constraints imposed by the parameterized skeletons and limb rigidity. Modeling poses by joint angles inherently follows the constraints imposed by a parameterized skeleton. However, defining loss over joint angles with equal weight given to all joints ignores the amount of influence that each joint contributes to both the learning process and final pose error. In actuality, an error in a parent joint has more impact on the final pose than the same amount of error in its child joints, demonstrated here with our uh, model skeleton, where a deflection in the red joint leads to a much larger displacement of the final hand uh, location than a deflection of the elbow joint shown in green. This is due to the fact that an error in the parent joint propagates through all of its children down to the leaf node in the kinematic tree during forward kinematics. One way to address these problems is by representing body pose using joint angles and then defining the loss on joints uh, on joint position by applying a forward kinematics at each time frame. However, applying forward kinematics in each time frame is computationally expensive. We therefore propose a hierarchical loss over joint angles, which weights each joint's error based on its impact on the reconstructed pose. Here, each weight is computed as the longest path from the underlying joint down to all of the connected end effectors in an average uh, body skeleton. We also use geodesic distance of rotation representation instead of the L1 or L2 norm, which allows us to better respect the topology space of these rotation representations and speeds up the beginning of our training. In this work, we wanted to evaluate our model based on two main criteria, both the quality and diversity of the motion generated. We expect the generated samples to be realistic and coherent with the attributes which are set as control parameters, but we also want the model to be able to generate motions with high diversity and natural stochasticity. In order to effectively evaluate these two criteria, we adapt uh, two metrics which were originally proposed for image generative models, the inception score and freshet inception distance. Inception score is based on a pre-trained classifier which is used to evaluate generated sequences. Animations which fulfill the semantics defined by a set of attributes should have a conditional attribute distribution with low entropy. In other words, the classifier should be very confident about the attributes associated with the generated animation. On the other hand, we expect our model to generate a high variety of sequences for each attribute setting, and therefore the unconditioned space should have a high entropy. Please see the paper for further details on our adaptation of this metric. The freshet inception distance is conceptually similar to the inception score in that it also relies on a pre-trained classifier, except it compares distribution statistics across a set of motion sequences for both synthesized and ground truth motion. These distributions are computed from the final feature extraction layer in the pre-trained classifier. Again, please see the paper for further details. We compared our proposed method with two previously proposed models, Quadranet and ERD, as well as several ablation configurations of our own model. Quadranet and ERD generate convincing walking and jogging samples. However, since the only source of stochasticity is in the initial hidden states, these models fail to generate a diverse set of sequences. In addition, they usually did not do particularly well uh, on sequences with non-periodic motion and showed early regression to the mean. Here we show the output of dimensionality reduction to project activations onto two dimensions. We sampled the sequences for each action type 
and uh, the gender labels provided in the real data, illustrated by circles. The sequences generated by our model are illustrated by crosses. As seen, our model generates sequences with similar diversity to real data while still accurately separating them the modes in a manner consistent with the training data. For the qualitative evaluation, we sampled five sequences for each action type from each model, as well as five real motion sequences for each action type. Then 20 human observers rated the samples from 1 to 10, with a rating of 1 meaning the motion was completely unrealistic, and a rating of 10 meaning it was completely realistic. Here you can see the results of our proposed model compared to the ablation configurations and competing methods. Overall, our model achieves the best qualitative ratings and particularly stands out in movements with lower degrees of periodicity, such as jumping or lifting. Finally, our model is capable of generating a batch of samples in parallel. This will further support tasks such as crowd simulation. Here we show several examples of this type of output. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please attend the Q&A session, or be sure to refer to our paper for further details.